If you're trying to eat healthy and get more protein in your diet, eating ice cream wouldn't usually come to mind as something that would fit the bill. However, in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to make three healthy, high protein ice cream recipes that are under 350 calories. They come in at around 20 grams of protein per serving, and they have way less sugar than a pint of Ben and Jerry's. Each recipe has its own very special secret ingredient. Plus, if you're not a huge fan of using protein powder, I even have a recipe you can make with a whole food swap. So, I got lots to show you, let's get right into it. Yay! Okay, right out of the bat, I'm just gonna say, all of these recipes are absolutely compatible with ice cream makers, or if you're one of those cool kids that has a Ninja Creamy, uh, you can absolutely use any of those, but they're not necessary. All you really need is a blender and a freezer. Okay, so let's get right into these healthy, high protein recipes. First up, we're going for the classic chocolate ice cream, and this one is a doozy. It is so flippin' good. What I love about this recipe is that we're using a really sneaky, delicious, healthy ingredient, none other than sweet potatoes. Now you guys might be thinking, that's kinda weird, Janelle. Why are you putting sweet potatoes in my ice cream? They're called sweet potatoes for a good reason, because they're naturally sweet. So when you add them to your baked goods or sweet treats, you don't have to use as much added sweeteners or sugars. So that's one reason why they work so great in ice cream. And no, you cannot taste them in this ice cream whatsoever. Okay, people, 22 grams of protein, 265 calories, and only seven easy ingredients. Let's do this thing. We're gonna start by baking up a small sweet potato. Let it cool until it's at least cool enough to handle so you don't burn your beautiful little fingers. And then once you're able to peel the skins off, you're just gonna give it a good mash with a fork. Make sure a lot of the chunks are kind of, you know, gone, because you don't wanna have big, weird chunks. Then once it's mashed, you're gonna transfer it to an ice cube tray. And I know this might seem a bit tedious, but trust me, don't skip the freezing of the sweet potato. It will improve the texture of the ice cream so, 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 so much. Let them freeze for at least three hours or up to overnight. Now this recipe does call for protein powder and I'm gonna be using my favorite brand called Good Protein. And really and truly, get a protein powder that you really like and is good quality and make sure it's one that is not too sweet. I really have tried so many other kinds of protein powders like Vega and I've just found they were way, way too sweet didn't have a lot of flavor and the texture was so-so. So make sure you get something that's really good. I really like the Good Protein brand. They have like 13 different flavors from like chocolate to mocha, peanut butter cups, strawberry, acai berry, or orange creamsicle. Literally every flavor you can think of. So good. I have a promo code you can use down below if you're interested to try the protein powder I'm using. They're not sponsoring this video. They're just my fave protein powder and when you use my code, you know, I get a little kickback that helps me to purchase more product to make more recipes for you. So win-win. <laughs> okay, back to the recipe. Now the next step is to freeze some Greek yogurt. I found a brand that I really like. Silk has just come out with a high protein Greek yogurt style yogurt. It's really easy to freeze it. All you have to do is grab yourself an ice cube tray, get some of that yogurt, scoop it out, freeze it for at least three to four hours or up to overnight. Pop those frozen yogurt cubes and the frozen sweet potato cubes right into your blender. And then next we're going to add our liquid ingredient. So I'm adding a little bit of soy milk. I'm using soy because it's the highest in protein that I can find. And then the next ingredient is chocolate pudding powder. Now this one might seem a little bit strange, but it's a hack that I've learned from the internet that adding some pudding powder, like from Jell-O, which is actually vegan and gluten-free, helps to actually kind of stabilize the ice cream as well as add like a nice thick flavor and you can get the fat free sugar free one if you're conscious about fat or sugars, which is what I used. Then add some cocoa powder. I'm using black cocoa powder because it's all I had, but any kind of cocoa powder will do. And then add two scoops of your favorite chocolate plant-based protein powder and a little bit of vanilla extract. Give all a good whiz in your blender. And if it's a little too thick to blend like mine was, just add a little splash of plant milk until it is blendable and creamy just like this. Personally, I love eating my ice creams pretty much right out of the blender while they're still kind of in that soft serve texture. But if you are someone who likes to have a more frozen texture to your ice cream, then you can absolutely put it into a kind of a rectangular container or a loaf pan and let it freeze for a couple hours. Just stir it about every 20 to 25 minutes until it is the texture you like. But 
For those of you who are like me, who like it soft, you can just eat it straight out of the blender. This chocolate ice cream is honestly so legit. The sweet potato is undetectable. It is really rich tasting, but not too heavy. It's light and fluffy, and it just has so much chocolatey flavor. It's so satisfying, you guys, and you will not feel like you're eating anything that is like unhealthy tasting. Like it tastes like the real thing. An absolutely legit chocolate ice cream that is good for you, that has so much protein, has way, way less calories, way less sugar. It's thick, it's just all the yums. Matcha, matcha man. I wanna be a matcha man. Okay, matcha. This is for all y'all matcha lovers out there, and I know there are many of you. I am one of them. I couldn't do this video without having a matcha ice cream, okay? So this one, mm, she's good. We are adding in avocado as the secret ingredient in this recipe by using something with like a bit of fat in it, like coconut milk or avocado. Once you blend it, it actually helps to kind of give that creamier store-bought ice cream texture that's kind of hard to achieve when you're doing like a low fat recipe or a low sugar recipe. But even just using half an avocado, which is all we're using in this recipe, it makes it so creamy and it actually does make it a little bit easier to scoop right out of the freezer. So that's my tip for you. Okay, let's get right into this recipe. So the flavor of protein powder I'm using here is actually vanilla chai as it's the only vanilla flavor I had, but it surprisingly turned out really well, like chai and matcha is a matcha made in heaven. <laughs> <sighs> Man, Janelle, don't quit your day job. <laughs> oh wait, I already did. Okay, so you're gonna start by adding in some flat milk plus your protein powder into your blender, followed by two tablespoons of matcha. Whatever your favorite matcha blend is, you just add it straight in. Then, like their last recipe, we're gonna be adding in some vanilla pudding powder, fat-free, sugar-free, and some more frozen yogurt cubes, plus half a frozen avocado. Again, the key to a really good texture is try to freeze as many of your ingredients as possible, like the Greek yogurt and the avocado. Heck, you can even freeze your soy milk too if you want. Now just give it all a good whiz in your blender until it is dreamy, creamy, it is spoonable and soft and luscious and oh my god, just seriously look at that. You can tell right away just how creamy it is. It's shiny and glistening, which is a really good indicator of good cream factor. Plus the color is just gorgeous, darling. Again, if you're like me, you can just eat it straight out of the blender as soft serve, which is kind of my preferred way to to eat this recipe, but you do you boo, you can freeze it or not. And whatever you do, it's gonna be so good. Top it off with your favorite toppings of your choice and enjoy your 20 grams of protein per serving. <sighs> I'm gonna need you to promise me that you're not gonna freak out, okay? Don't freak out at what I'm about to tell you, okay? I'm gonna need you to go into your cupboard right now in your kitchen and pull out a can of beans. Cause that's what this recipe calls for, okay? We're putting beans in our ice cream and you're just gonna have to be okay with it, okay? Cause I promise you, it is not what it seems. It's what it beans. I don't know, it didn't work. So the key to achieving a good tasting, nicely textured, plant-based ice cream using beans is to be very selective with the kind of bean you're using. You gotta go with a bean that has a nice soft skin like white kidney beans or cannellini beans, uh, navy beans, or even soft beans like butter beans or pinto beans. Anything with a harder, tough skin just really doesn't blend that well and you're gonna wanna avoid that. Nobody likes a gritty ice cream. Mm, okay folks, so six ingredients, that's all you need to make a delicious vanilla strawberry ice cream. Ice cream. The only thing not pictured here are the frozen strawberries. So first of all, add your soy milk. I actually would recommend freezing it because it makes it a little bit creamier right out of the blender. Then we're gonna add some vanilla extract. I'm using about two teaspoons here, plus a couple tablespoons of maple syrup. You can also use agave or date syrup, whatever you like, plus a little bit of that vanilla pudding powder. And then we're gonna add in some of those beans. I'm using white kidney beans. 
aka cannellini beans. Then we're gonna add in some of those frozen yogurt cubes. Give it all a good blitz, and at this point, you're probably gonna notice that it looks a bit liquidy, more like a smoothie texture. Again, if you were to freeze your soy milk and just add a little bit of liquid soy milk to the blender, it definitely wouldn't be so liquidy. But now we're gonna add in some frozen strawberries, which will really help to thicken up the texture, so it'll be a little bit more like soft serve or a really thick milkshake. Now you can eat it soft right out of the blender, or if you want it to be, you know, firmer, a little bit more frozen, add it to a nice wide rectangular tray like mine here, smooth it out, and then you're gonna wanna freeze it for about two to two and a half hours, and make sure you stir it every 20 minutes or so until it turns out looking something like this. You want it to be nice and frozen, have a good scoopable texture, very much like ice cream. Like, I don't know about you, but that looks pretty damn legit to me. This, to me, is very, very impressive for an ice cream made primarily from beans and soy milk and yogurt. So yeah, the texture is truly on point. I would even say that the beans make the texture really nice and thick and creamy. And no, it's not gritty. You can see that it's not gritty. It's actually really, really smooth. And uh, having a good high powered blender will really help to ensure the smoothest texture possible. I just topped mine with some shredded coconut. And also you don't have to use strawberry. At this point, you can really add whatever kind of frozen fruit you like. I think banana or pineapple or mango would be really good with really any kind of neutral base like vanilla. The mouthfeel of this ice cream truly is on point and I don't think you'll be disappointed. I really think you should try it. Even if you do use protein powders, I still say go for it. Try out the bean ice cream. I really don't think you'll be disappointed. <laughs> it's so good. If you're looking for even more delicious, healthy frozen treats, I got you boo. Like, subscribe if you're not already, and hags, have a good summer. Peace. Macho, macho man.